Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Buona notte. Ciao. And welcome to this evening's uh, final session on Instagram Live, at least, of the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival online edition. Yes, that was my thumb covering the lens a moment beforehand. I've been trying to figure out how best to cover one of these sessions without pulling a derp face while waiting for the, the camera to kick in. What do you think? I think it's kind of working. Look who it is! Hey! Hey, Pat! How are you? Ciao! Ciao, 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 tutti il mondo! Here's a hug. It's good. It's good. This we are like... This is as close as I can hug a person right now. Yeah. I ah. want to hug you, ah. too! Ah. You know, so much. Let's let's drop this whole lasagna thing. Let's hug for an hour. Lasagna. All right. We'll talk about lasagna or the concept. <laughs> we we gotta conceptualize the lasagna. I I have something written about lasagna in uh, 1934 here from the Gazzetta di Popolo. Yeah. That'll be probably the first of the Italian words I'm gonna mispronounce tonight. Is it uh, 1930? 1934, by a wow. journalist called Paolo Manelli, and he was yeah. writing about... Uh, a difficult moment uh, for Italy. Well, but, uh, yeah. The writing uh, moment uh, for the fascist. He was but writing about um, not just lasagna, but he was writing specifically about the lasagna alla bolognese. Yeah. And he wrote... Because they are using bolognese sauce. He wrote, I have read books sacred and profane. I have sought certainties and consolations in a thousand volumes, but no book is worth this volume of lasagna, which the salacious Bolognese Osti serve. Between the pages of the lasagna is a sticky resin of cheese and a blink of truffles teeming with precious giblets. Skim it, devour its pages. It is a little Decameron, a handbook of philosophy and a consoling poem that makes us happy to be alive. Does that speak to the lasagna alla bolognese of your, of your experience? It, you know, it's, um, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, that that's a, a poetic, you know, approach uh, to lasagna, as all the the era, um, a lot of um, a lot of uh, intellectual uh, mm. they like in get involved into food, like the futurists, for example, Marinetti, you know, e la cucina futurista, and uh, the way he's writing is uh, writing in a, in a very poetic way, you know, and um, but everything that. Uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, the truffle and the things and the bolognese, you know, it doesn't, uh, it's not, the bolognese sauce is made for pasta and lasagna is not pasta. Lasagna is different. You know, lasagna uh, needs uh, all the ragu, like the sauces, like the meat sauce, they have a specific use for this, that, on the other. Otherwise, um, you have the approach that the French has uh, to the pasta. So, la pâte, c'est la pâte. Uh, pasta is pasta. No, pasta is not pasta. Pasta is reflecting centuries of history uh, of territory. You know, it's like uh, 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 Italy is, uh, what is... What is Italy? Italy is about uh, uh, the color, the beauty, the, the art, uh, the... Um, uh, the, 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 the light, uh, the, you know, fantasy. And, and Italy is like from the up north, uh, close to the Alps, to uh, south, in the middle of Mediterranean, is the wind. Mm. And the territory has a different approach. You have to, you have to, have, you, you have to try the ragù alla napoletana. It's completely different from the ragù alla bolognese. But uh, what is ragu? Ragu, like the Bolognese sauce, is, uh, is the way to uh, 
recycle to use everything you have and you chop it and you put it together with, uh, you know, the ingenious of uh, the, as we call, rasdore. Rasdore was, uh, is a term that you use for the women, they take care of the house. You know, they, they take care of the economy of the house and they were taking care of the farms. In the meantime, the men, they were going out and uh, work in the field, uh, the farmers. They were taking care of the feeding the people, but also the, the money, you know. So mm. he, a good rasdora uh, was uh, the one who was uh, able to use everything, not to waste anything. And uh, when you have a ragu, you have a broth, you have a raviolo, you have a rosetta, can be everything. Is there exactly as I was explaining in Kitchen Quarantine? You know, mm. then I was making something. Um, I, we were like, I was like, open the refrigerator and tell and teach everyone how to use this, how to use that. It's a mental palate exercise. It could be even a, an intellectual exercise mm. because the mental palate is, a, is what, you know, gives you direction on mm. how to work with uh, yes, ingredients. So mm. uh, this is a very very beautiful description, uh, but very, you know... Very 1934. 1934. <laughs> I, in, uh, I'm, I, this is one of my most treasured uh, book. This is backwards now, unfortunately. You'll have to read this backwards. This is uh, Oretta Zanini di Vita and her Encyclopedia of Pasta. And I've never seen a more thorough book on the subject it's published in italian first of course and she says that that uh lasagna is one of the very most ancient pastas in fact it might have even been like a bread dough originally and it exists every, it exists everywhere in italy she says that every italian region has a, a lasagna from the lasagna da fornel baked with apples and served at christmas in the dolomites down to uh, Calabria, where yeah. the lasagna may be stuffed with meat, hard-boiled eggs, peas, artichokes, and mushrooms. Yeah. Everywhere, yeah. always different. But for us, it's like, I think lasagna is everywhere in the world. You know, it's one of those things that uh, travel uh, with the emigrants, and uh, they spread uh, these, uh, uh, you know, Italians are everywhere. So. They spread this uh, when um, uh, this culture um, from, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the moment you are like in New York or New Jersey or California or Australia, you want to have uh, some uh, taste of what was home. Mm. Uh, you know, there is a script, beautiful scripts, um, even for pizza, no? Uh, people, they were moving from Sicily, Calabria, moving to Turin and uh, to work for the car company Fiat or Alfa Romeo or Lancia, you know. They were bringing suitcase full of food. But at that time, to go up north, uh, the train was like a real journey, you know, mm. like, hours and hours and hours of train, waiting, connection, arriving in Rome, connecting there. So the first stop was Naples. And uh, the, the, what the pizzaioli, the pizzaioli, like the pizza makers, they were uh, there waiting for this. And uh, what they were doing, they were like um, getting uh, ingredients from, uh, you know, like for example, let's say one ingredient that comes from l'anduja, like, like the sausage, anduja, like fresh ground pork with a lot of uh, red pepper, Calabria style. So they were getting, getting the anduja uh, uh, and from uh, the emigrants. They were putting anduja into the pizza, you know, like mozzarella, uh, tomato, anduja, and uh, I don't know, whatever. And, and the pizza anduja reminds the guy that 
where, is, where he was from. So it's exactly the same thing, you know, for lasagna. Mm. The first meal we served at the refectorio in Milan in 2015 was by uh, Daniel Ham. Daniel Ham, uh, he made, uh, um, he had a lot of zucchini. What he did is slice the zucchini very thin. He uh, saute into the grill, he grilled the zucchini, and uh, he made a, a meat sauce and he created a lasagna of grilled zucchini. You know, with the bechamel sauce, uh, with parmigiano, whatever. So it's a way to move things, you know, and uh, bake them. And, and when, once you bake them, you have a result. But, uh, you know, you cannot, uh, you know, simplify uh, the lasagna just to say that, you know. A lasagna made by me, by Daniel, that, you know, we are always focused on excellence, focused on quality, um, needs to be selected, all these different flavors, all these different ingredients, and prepare in a perfect way. One of the most important things in lasagna is the space between one ingredient and the other. Mm. That, those spaces are like the one that get, give uh, the, the softness, fluffiness, mm. you know, mm. on, the, on, the, on, the, on the pasta. Exactly as Giro is making his sushi, you know? Mm. Uh, the secret of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Giro is not the fish. Of course, it's the fish is perfect, you know? It's come, the calamaro comes from from the same uh, uh, from the sea with the same water with the same temperature not to get stressed but is the rice the acidity of the rice the way it, it uses uh, the compression of the rice and the 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 in the middle between fish and rice there's a part in which with his hand is is leaving some uh, space for to breathe at that point, when he's giving, he giving to you the sushi, the, the piece, you eat it and you incorporate oxygen into your palate and you understand everything. It's exactly the, the same for lasagna. If you see a lasagna that is like, boom, compressed into layers of pasta and things, it's just eat. It's not, there's nothing poetic in there. But when you see the lasagna that is getting like this and you raise it as a souffle because of the air, because of the crunchiness on top, the fluffiness in the middle, the sauce that is coming down, the perfect proportion between meat and, uh, you know, whatever sauce you want to put. I never use a bechamella, but I use a, a Parmigiano Reggiano cream in the middle. So... It depends on uh, what you want, you know. That's the, what really makes the difference. Massimo? Yeah. I'm freaking out. <laughs> what? I'm blowing my mind here. Like, I've made a lot of lasagna. I, I think it's been long enough now since I left university that I can say this without worrying my parents too much, but I skipped the whole second year of university and just made lasagna at home and, like, <laughs> watched, uh, watched Italian gangster movies. I thought I could come to this conversation and pretty much hold my own. Like, yes, I understand that you are the world's most celebrated Italian chef and I'm just a guy in a room in, in Melbourne, but still, I've made a lot of lasagna. So I thought, we're going to talk about cheese. We're going to talk about pasta. I was going to lay some cool things on you about how you should be able to, you know, read the, the Bible, the scripture through the pasta. We're going to talk about ragu. Maybe we'll talk about beschiamella. I didn't think that we would be talking about air. What the fuck? <laughs> I know. This I is know. incredible. I guess this no, is very, no, uh, this is very like John Cage, you know, the spaces between yeah. the notes. You know, like uh, Giro publicly said uh, that uh, for him, I'm uh, the best pilot in the world. Every time I go there, I always get the right thing, the right things, the right thing. Last time I was there, I was complaining because the rice was uh, the rice with the first uh, 
three bites, it was too acidic. And I said, no, it's, it, this is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he said? He said, you are right. Because said, you get out. came early. You came half an hour early. You have to give, to leave uh, the, the rice, to give that half an hour for the acidic uh, to disappear. But it's your fault, it's not my fault. He said wow. to me, you know, we, we, have, we have this discussion all the time. And, uh, you know, I love to do this. And that's why I love uh, when I do lasagna, when I make lasagna, um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I create this uh, emotional feeling. You know, when, I, when people come from all over the world in uh, Osteria Francescana, um, uh, people want to eat uh, to be fed with emotions, not with food, you know, and to give uh, and to transfer emotion uh, sitting on centuries of history, I have to think about, you know, in a very critic way, what was the best of each things that I'm serving, like not like getting lost into the everyday life. So mm. if I get lost into the everyday life, I'm going to make the most amazing food that everyone in the world loves. You know, it's not, I'm not like, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. So we, we, didn't, uh, we didn't have to invent, you know, we René Rezepi, we discuss uh, all the time about uh, 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 it was more difficult for him to create a Nordic cuisine or for me to evolve Italian cuisine. That's, that's a big, big question, eh? Mm. To me, it was much more difficult to evolve Italian cuisine because, you mm. know, thinking about what, you know, the nostalgia that is like inside, um, you know, you want to be comfortable, you know, mm. you want to be hot when you sit at the table, you know, there's a, the most amazing salame or prosciutto or mortadella with the fried dough in the perfect way, crunchy, soft, uh, not even feel the, the oil or the, the fat, uh, uh, <clears throat> pork fat, you know. So that's, that's something that you want to feel. But once, once you, 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 you ask yourself question, like, what was my favorite thing eating when I was a kid? And, and the answer was the crunchy part of the lasagna. Because uh, that crunchy part, as you all know, <clears throat> we were, it's like, it's the things that every single kid, uh, you know, is trying to uh, eat and, uh, and try and steal from the big Am I connected? I can hear you now, but you're a, little bit, you're a little bit out of sync. How about now? All right. All right. So that's, that's mm. why we try to understand what was uh, the thing. But, but the creative process behind the crunchy part of the lasagna is different than create a, a simple lasagna. We want to create a lasagna as a flavor, a lasagna as a memory, but to join something that to me is like, it's crazy. When I travel all over the world, and you know I travel everywhere, uh, you know, most of the time, they want me to try the Italian restaurants. And I said, no, no, I want to try locals. I don't want to try Italian restaurants, you know. No, 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 you have to try this. This is amazing. Okay, okay, let's try. And, you know, 90% of the time, they want me to taste their spaghetti alla bolognese. You know, you have to know that spaghetti alla bolognese doesn't exist in Italy because spaghetti are from south of Italy. And with spaghetti, you need a velvety sauce mm. because when you roll the pasta, the velvet stays around the pasta and you eat pasta and sauce. Mm. 
If you serve spaghetti alla bolognese, you roll the spaghetti, all the, the meat fell in the plate. So, uh, uh, you know, you eat pasta and then you have to eat uh, the sauce on the side because uh, it doesn't get through. So the point was like spaghetti, uh, the bolognese sauce is perfect with tagliatelle. So mm. the handmade noodle, very large that you try in Osteria or with lasagna. So my question, my crazy question to myself was, how can rejoin spaghetti and bolognese sauce transforming spaghetti into the answer was sp transforming spaghetti into uh, the uh, uh, lasagna or into the um, uh, uh, tagliatelle tagliatelle was too difficult so i trans i trans i used the lasagna no so what i did i did three different spaghetti one uh, with pesto one with parmigiano and one with tomato Then I put in the blender and I simmer. I create three different dough as an Italian flag. Then I, I roll this dough together as it was the pasta with the mattarello, very, very thin. Then I shape rectangles as the Italian flag and I put in a dehydrator for almost one week. When it's perfectly, almost transparent, I fry them the three spaghetti. I fried them and it came out very soft and crunchy. At that point, I tasted it. Just having a little uh, internet moment oh. there, Chef. There we go. Okay. So, smoke them when I uh, after I smoked them it was better but not perfect so I, I got a torch and I start burning the all outside and inside to transform the three different uh, spaghetti into one of the four ears of the pasta that was coming out from uh, the big pan of the lasagna and that the, the flavor is perfect At that point, I need the bolognese sauce. So I put the bolognese sauce as my mom was doing for lasagna. So very, very little tomato, uh, all rigorously and chop, uh, bone marrow uh, <clears throat> at the bottom, and, um, uh, and, and on the top, a foam, a, like a parmigiano reggiano uh, bechamel for me. Mm. With, uh, with the siphon, using the siphon for the bechamel to disappear, not to get heavy in there. Mm. Uh, this very light, crunchy part on top of that, and you can break it as a kid and eat with your hands and, and uh, experience that kind of moment when you were a kid and you were fighting over the crunchy part of the lasagna with your brothers. So that's my approach on the on lasagna. What um, of of the elements of that? And I, I know that uh, that you know, I th there's certainly some people at home, particularly while we're in quarantine, who will attempt that uh, quite involved preparation. But if we were to take elements of that and try and incorporate that into a more everyday lasagna that we would be making at home, what do you think we would pull out from that? Uh, you have to keep the ragu, you have to keep the, the, um, the, uh, not the pasta, the, the ragu, the, um, uh, be, be, the sauce, the parmigiano reggiano sauce, you have to keep, uh, par parmigiano reggiano, remember always this, not grana padano, parmigiano reggiano, because grana padano is pasteurized meal, Gra uh, mm. parmigiano reggiano is uh, raw meal. So you need uh, grated Parmigiano Reggiano and older. You are in Melbourne um, or Sydney. You can you can find all the Parmigiano Reggiano you want because uh, because of the uh, because I I experienced you know when I was there and my since my first Melbourne Food and Wine Festival mm. I went to I don't remember maybe Di Paolo is called I don't remember to get the Parmigiano. Enoteca Soleno. I know I ever tried like. Yeah. 
40 months. So you can get whatever you want in Australia. So, and what do you do? You have two different pan of lasagna and uh, just create two different, just two layers of pasta. One at the bottom, one at the top. You finish the second layer of pasta with uh, a little bit of ragu spread everywhere and uh, parmigiano, grated parmigiano, just a little touch of uh, cold butter, uh, one here, there, there, this, there. Then uh, you use the oven uh, with grill on top. Mm. So you get uh, just uh, two layers of lasagna, soft on the uh, bottom and very crunchy on top. So you can make two of them and uh, you have the perfect crunchy part of the lasagna. We, so in Australia, since we've been in, uh, in the pandemic, um, I, had an, I had an American journalist contact me and she said, what, I'm doing a story for you know, a big American publication and we're talking about the dishes that everyone in their culture is going to for comfort during, um, during this pandemic. And she said, what is it in Australia? And I think she was very disappointed when I said lasagna. I think she probably wanted me to say kangaroo pies or something like that. But it has proven to be one of the dishes here that everyone is making and, and can't yeah. get enough of while we're having yeah. this, this strange time that we've all been living through. Why do you think lasagna... And for one thing, I'd like to ask you if that's been... If you, if you happen to know if people have been cooking lasagna a lot in Italy while you've been in lockdown. And I guess the other question is, why do you think people are turning to this dish in particular? Because it's, um, first of all, because the flavor are distilled by centuries. It's not like something brand new that you create uh, because it's trendy, because uh, we want to have... Uh, a new, we, we passed through all this uh, trend uh, in the last 20 years. And, uh, you know, they disappear very easy. You know, mm. there's a moment in which uh, oh, the focus is on that. The other is focus is on that. But those are trends. I never follow trends. Mm. I always follow culture. That is completely different. And, uh, you know, uh, the flavor of the lasagna is a umami flavor, very, very umami. And, um, you know, has been uh, distilled by centuries and centuries of tradition. So we already passed through all this. And once you create something very important, a very, very creative uh, things that it's a beautiful creation, is the, cre the creativity, the avant-garde becomes popular and uh, the avant-garde become tradition. Think about pizza. Yeah. Think about pizza. Pizza before uh, Mr. Esposito created for the Queen Margherita, like the pizza with uh, some mozzarella that was coming from south of Naples, Pestum uh, and Caserta was brought there. Um, uh, the tomato, fresh tomato from the garden. So it, it was like, uh, the pizza was like, a focaccia with on top everything that was left from the market. So it was a mm. one whole meal from the, uh, for the people they were working in, uh, in the market, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and from that moment, it became a, a worldwide icon. So uh, because the perfect combination between the lactic of the mozzarella, the milk, of the of the these uh, buffalo you know uh, uh, or or cows, um, uh, the the freshness and the the chlorophyll of the and, and aromatic of the basil, you know, is it was a perfect combination. So uh, from uh, one thing that was very creative, uh, it became it became a tradition and spread. Mm -hmm. The world. So these are immortal flavors that uh, are distilled by century of evolution and tradition. 
and and comforting people as we speak on the other side of the world in Australia. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. To me, it's like uh, when I when I, I think Australia is like one of those places. Like uh, when I travel, like Buenos Aires or uh, you know, let me think. Uh, other, but you know, in which uh, I I feel so comfortable be, being Italian because uh, I feel hugged. You know, uh, mm. saying is like to me is like I feel home. You know, you know, I came like twenty five times, so. <laughs> and more. I hope. Yeah. Um, can you can you paint us a picture of uh, what life looks like in Italy now, or at least your part of Italy? Yeah, it's a. Uh... <clears throat> It's uh, now the numbers are extremely good, and uh, the old uh, thing is coming is going down. And uh, actually, you know, um, <clears throat> I was very critic on the, in the beginning with the communication uh, they were doing. You know, they weren't doing uh, the the perfect thing. Um, but uh, the old, uh, you know, um, how can it task force of uh, uh, virologists, uh, economists, uh, and things, they were like very, they did a great job, a very, you know, strict lockdown. And, uh, you know, in uh, 10, you know, it, it, because they were like the worry part, like the, the very scary part was there was, there were not enough play, places in, and as you know, in the hospital for the mm -hmm. intensive care. So they did a great lockdown and we are like, uh, we are totally out now, uh, especially from, um, there's a, just a, a Lombardia that is, uh, they are working, still working with numbers because it's the most uh, uh, productive and uh, populated uh, region in Italy. So it's, it's difficult to do a lockdown for university, for young uh, you know, people in Milan, uh, Bergamo and Brescia. There's a big production. Uh, the companies are working like crazy because uh, you know how we are in Italy. Like we are like focus, 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 no? And, uh, and, uh, but uh, you know, the restaurant, uh, the, all the governor of the region, they decide to open uh, the, the restaurants and bar. Uh, uh, today is Tuesday, uh, 10, 10 days ago. And, uh, but I didn't, you know, uh, I was the first one who, who went in lockdown. Uh, even if I was uh, fully booked uh, lunch when I see, Mo I saw Modena as a red zone because uh, you know how much I care about my team. So I knew that in these years I worked very, very, very oriented on, uh, uh, push Osteria Francescana growing as a company and not push uh, uh, and not uh, focus on myself and making money. And so uh, what I did, I, I invest, I keep investing in Osteria Francescana as Maria Luisa, as Franceschetta, everything. So I was able to, to have uh, this kind of approach, uh, very smooth, very zen, uh, and I told uh, all my team uh, that is my future. Uh, don't worry, I take care of everything. And I, I did. So I took care of all my team. Uh, they were locked into apartments uh, uh, owned by us. So um, uh, right now, we are, uh, we are uh, right now, this moment, we are preparing the old menu, uh, the new, the brand new menu inspired by Surgeon Pepper's Lonely Art Club Band as a conceptual way to think uh, about, uh, you know, in the most successful moment uh, in life, because, uh, you know, everything we do is, is successful. So we are very lucky, you know? And uh, we want to change everything, you know? As they, as, uh, they did, uh, like, uh, 45 years ago, 50 years ago, the Beatles, you know? most successful moment or Bob Dylan did uh, when uh, he started playing like a Rolling Stone. You know, it's like change everything. So the menu... So you're going to plug in your electric guitars soon. Exactly. 
Uh, we're gonna play, we're gonna do like with a little help from my friends. So it's a menu uh, that we created during the lockdown, uh, reflecting, chatting, you know, on uh, concept and things. So there, it's gonna be it's gonna be plates like uh, um, strawberry fields forever, Lucy in the sky with diamond, uh, you know, these kind of things, you know. Um, and uh, we are like inspired also for the uh, with the lockdown lockdown here in uh, Modena in our apartment with family, uh, you know. But what we did, uh, we try with nothing. We try we try to create something, you know. Mm. They gave us, uh, you know, sometimes, and uh, uh, what is remaining? What was remaining was uh, silence and still and. Uh, the, uh, I, we thought immediately those were rare moments, you know, in which uh, you had to do something very special. So what I did in the first, uh, since, since the beginning, I started during the day organizing all my records, all my books, uh, uh, and library, stuff like that. And in the evening, share joy. Uh, it was not a masterclass with kitchen quarantine. So... With, the, with nothing, me, Alexa, and one iPhone, we create, we won a, a Webby Award. So it's like... Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's such a big deal, you know? Like, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, in the, uh, the, just uh, yesterday night, I received a, a message from, uh, from the McCartney family uh, that uh, they read something about uh, this new menu that I'm going to start uh, the 2nd of June when we, uh, we will reopen and saying, if you need some help, uh, we can collaborate with you because we are very honored you're doing a, a, a tasting menu dedicated to the Beatles. So will it be, veg will it be vegetarian now if it's McCartney? I know, but uh, it's, uh, it's very easy, as you know, uh, for a chef uh, to recreate something like that uh, as a vegetarian menu. Um, mm. Can improvise, uh, uh, you cannot improvise to be a great chef, not that I want to say that I'm a great chef, but you cannot improvise to be a great chef, but a, a great chef can improvise uh, with, the, with his mental palate to immediately um, mix. We, have, uh, we always have uh, a vegetarian, a vegan uh, uh, menu in uh, in Osteria Franciscana. When you travel from uh, all over the world, you know, I'm uh, one of the things I love the most is uh, challenge myself with a la carte menu. To me, mm. is like the most uh, uh, incredible thing uh, that you can do because it's the most difficult thing. It's very easy to create a tasting menu, you know, like two mm. bites and then move to the next. And then move to the oh, next, wow. you know, that, that's it. But it, a, a la carte menu is extremely difficult because our mm. like uh, 11, 12, 13 bites and it has to be amazing, not eat, mm. amazing in the palate. So it's a totally different approach. So it's what we are doing now. And uh, I think I'm very positive on... Uh, to see what's going on around. There's great energy to restart uh, all my team. Uh, uh, we start in, a, in safety condition. That's very important. Mm. So yeah, for the team, uh, as, uh, as we, we went in lockdown before the others, uh, we are waiting till uh, the right condition are there. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, uh, we did uh, all the virologic uh, test uh, to the team uh, uh, we 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 paid for a private insurance for my guys we made all the uh, mask they're like perfectly done uh, matching with gucci <laughs> i was about to say are they gucci masks yeah yeah, yeah well yeah we did it we did it we did it and then uh, you know how much i love uh, my partner you know i picked my partner because i love them Gucci is, mm -hmm. is, is, uh, is designing all the, their stuff exactly as I cook. You know, they look at the past 
and in a critic way and bring the best from the past into the future. You know, with, uh, with uh, Alessandro Michele, filter mind, you know, that is, uh, he creates his own word, but thinking about what has been done in the last 70 years. Uh, as uh, Maserati does or Ferrari does uh, with the car, exactly the same. The best GT in the world are the Maserati. They invented the GT, the two plus two. And so, you know, they have to do that. You they cannot just, um, forget. Just... So you see, all this conversation comes and goes always on those directions. You know, as you said, as you asked me in the, in the middle of the conversation. What, um, just circling back to the, the Sergeant Pepper idea, which I am absolutely fascinated by, which song is proving, has proven most challenging to, to fit to this idea or to fit a dish to or a course to? Yeah, it's, it's not about songs. It's about concepts. Of course, it's, larger, it's also about songs. Yeah. But, for example, yeah, in Kids in Quarantine, uh, we, we had a, a special connection with uh, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinta Ardern. And uh, she's an amazing person. I met her uh, when, we, when we were at the United Nations in September. She was very interested in what we were doing, the whole project of the refectorio. Actually, Australians, we almost ready to come uh, with the refectorio in Sydney um, with our partner, Oz Harvest. So, two thumbs up. So, um, they sent from New Zealand, they sent uh, a few ingredients that I found mind blowing. You know, like the, the farm raised. Uh, in the middle of clear water, giant salmon, or like the manuka honey. And we create a, a, a crank caramel uh, with manuka honey. So it, the all matching of vanilla, manuka honey, uh, eggs, uh, caramelized uh, things, uh, flowers, elder flowers, infusion into milk uh, you know it came out it's such an amazing thing that i said and i served that with uh, strawberry kiwi marinated into dark cherry vinegar and uh, you know so what we did you know we is gonna be one of the dishes and the strawberries they're gonna be uh, the field you know transform the field into a straw field with a creme caramel for two in the tasting menu uh, with manuka honey and um, you know this kind of caramelized uh, flowers on top and it, it's so good and the, the plate is strawberry feels forever because this is a flavor that is going to stay forever it's going to stay Evolve them and bring into the 21st uh, century. Chef, you're, Chef, you're, you're getting a little bit uh, pixelated and your, your audio is slowing down there a little bit. I don't know if someone's, uh, you know, watching some Netflix or uh, starting up the PlayStation there, but um, bear with us. I'm sorry? Oh, your, your internet connection is just slowing down there a little bit on your I side. I know. How about now? Can you hear us now? I, I can hear it now. Cool. Um, what, um, what does recovery look like? Where do we go from here? You know, each one of us has a different approach to what happened. And you know, and you know exactly what's going on. Uh, uh, there are places in which uh, the uh, the cost, like the fi the cost of the rent, the cost of the people uh, are very, very, they went, they go out of uh, the things and some of the, the restaurants are, uh, you know, uh, probably closing down. A lot of also mm. the mediocre 
restaurant. They cannot, they were like, you know, or they're gonna disappear. Uh, it's gonna, most of the restaurant, they're gonna open it. When, I, when all, the, uh, all the, the young chefs, they were writing from all over the world, I was uh, trying to push them, especially if young, if, especially if the restaurants, they're gonna be uh, uh, in a difficult situation uh, because of the demand is gonna slow down. Uh, mm. to, to, to stay close to the farmers, fishermen, cheesemakers, the locals one. It's very important to act very local in the beginning, very local. Uh, but I push them to never forget uh, who they are and where they come from. You know, for example, uh, in um, Los Angeles, I have all the team uh, uh, of uh, Gucci Osteria in Beverly Hills that uh, is, uh, is uh, now they're working in a soup kitchen uh, to create, uh, uh, to feed people in Skid Row for the whole lockdown. Uh, since yesterday, they were able to go back in the, into the kitchen. But during the lockdown, I said to Mattia, the chef, and to Tamara, the pastry chef, to stay close uh, to all the fishermen at the Santa Barbara Fish Market and Santa Monica Farmers Market. So to, to get uh, products uh, for their soup kitchen, but also the back to, to, to get closer and closer to these people. They can could mm. you uh, for, with the restaurant. In another way, in a creative process, I said, Mattia, Tamara, you're from, one is from Bergamo, the other is from uh, um, Trentino. So you have such a big heritage that you cannot forget about that. Just imagine those ingredients to transform into your cuisine, um, uh, uh, but the acting local and getting close with the local uh, thing. For Osteria Francescana is different, uh, Pat. You know, Seria, uh, since uh, we have, we, we communicate that uh, the second of, the, of uh, June we will be open, uh, we are fully booked. So it's different, you know. So what I see, I see maybe, you know, it was a moment to reflect about uh, many things uh, to our way to approach uh, to food but for us it's always been like that uh, you know you saw and, and you know how i care about uh, my local uh, products we just uh, we just uh, put on maria luigia we were like working me and lara every day in the in uh, in the field uh, with our farmers to we move uh, 12 different area from with the bees uh, and uh, we plant uh, uh, some grano saraceno, some uh, sar saraceno wheat. Old, uh, uh, we have, uh, we bought all these uh, uh, old uh, uh, seeds uh, because the bees love uh, the flower of grano saraceno. Uh, mm. We were planting uh, all these uh, beautiful herbs. Uh, we doubled the garden. So that's what it is, you know. The future is in there. You know, this local uh, approach, uh, uh, very ethic uh, and uh, uh, close to the static uh, way of thinking. Will, you, will your customers just be Italian for the first little while? But no, for the first day, I think it's going to be just Emilia. Because the 2nd of June is, uh, uh, is the day of the Republic and is mm. a uh, is national holiday mm. so the government decide to stay close so mm. you cannot travel from one region to another from the 3rd of june you can travel inside italy mm. and, uh, f i don't know for sure because uh, they're going to announce the 29th if mm. the numbers are still going down, but the numbers are amazing now. So I don't have any doubt that they're gonna open uh, the whole Italy, but uh, 
uh, with France, Germany, uh, Italy, and Spain. Uh, they are discussing the whole uh, possibility of traveling uh, around the Schengen. So mm. there's, uh, you know, those uh, um, the Austria and Holland, they're like not allowed, not, not uh, aligned with the others. Mm. But, you know, even uh, Sweden, they decide the different politics uh, to, keep, uh, uh, to keep everything open. And now yeah. they have uh, the, the highest uh, rank of uh, and contagious uh, in uh, the whole world. So uh, I think uh, Sweden uh, is going to decide to keep uh, all the border closed because, you know, the, it, was, it was a suicide approach to the virus. So it depends on what is going to be. For sure, yeah. in Italy, we're going to travel around Italy. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, is a, um, it's a beautiful moment uh, to rediscover the beauty of Italy um, uh, in the uh, most unexpected places we have uh, from uh, Dolomites in August to, the, to, to Sicily. I, I spoke to your uh, old friend Rene Redzepi a couple of days ago in yeah. this in this yeah. very yeah space. yeah it's a totally different approach. I spoke with him too, and uh, and uh, he was asking uh, many different things about what I was doing, my approach and things, and I was asking him, and we have uh, exchange. So he decided to do that kind of choice for me. Uh, you know, I'm I'm too much into contemporary thinking and mixing uh, all my uh, passion into edible bites put together. And I read uh, too much of this uh, quarantine from Celine to Bob Dylan, from uh, uh, Leonard Cohen to Seneca. So it's, it's difficult to, for me to, to... It was very easy and natural to create uh, something like that, uh, to involve the whole team to create something like that. So each one of us has a different approach. And uh, you he, know, he had a question for you, for, for me to ask you, actually. Rene? Yeah. What? His question was, well, he was saying that uh, the thing, he said he had some, some good days and some bad days, but he said the, on the good days, he focused on freedom and spontaneity. And he said he wanted to ask you what spontaneity means to you right now. And I said, I think Massimo is possibly one of the most spontaneous people I know. So he probably won't have a lot of trouble uh, speaking to this. But that is Renee's question for you. No, I was, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, like, you know me. You know, I was working with Rene uh, at El Bulli, like 21 mm. years ago. We were there together. And we were like, he knows me extremely well, but maybe more than any other. And uh, you, as, as you do, because I was always open with a few of you guys around the world, because I love the conversation that we have. You know, I remember, I, I can mention, you know, like uh, talking about poetry with you and Jeff Gardner in, uh, in, uh, in uh, New York. So, uh, you know, be spontaneous is be real. You know, you don't fake. You don't, uh, you know, this is you. And uh, th this kind of conversation, for example, uh, or um, uh, interviews, uh, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I don't even want to know questions because to me, it's good to the first one. Is always good the first one. The first answer is the answer that reflects your state of mind in the moment you ask the question. So Kitchen Quarantine, uh, the, the enormous success of Kitchen Quarantine is because we did everything without filters. So mm. we have Charlie that, you know, you know how he is Charlie and you cannot teach Charlie something, you know, mm. don't, don't do this, please don't say that. Please don't attack me, or please don't do this. He's gonna do it because there's no filters. And mm. 
you know, we went on and on every night. We decided to do it even if I was extremely down as, you know, because the curve of your feeling was like this during this uh, uh, quarantine, you know, mm. the, uh, in which uh, you were like feeling so positive and other days you felt so blue and down and out. And, mm. uh, and, uh, but we went on and uh, there were moments in which, uh, you know, they were like the people, they were following us, but thousands of thousands of people, they were, they saw me very down and out and they were mm. trying to give me and transfer positive energy, you know, because of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, it's another it's another reason because I don't do TV because uh, when you do TV it, it's uh, always uh, uh, um, stop chef can you go back can you say again no I can't I can't because I already said and if you have it you have it you know that's why it's the only master chef I, I do is um, with George with Matt uh, you know and uh, because they let me do whatever I want, you know? Okay, do whatever you want. And uh, we have good, we, all the time we have good time and uh, we're like really involved in what we do. Like last time we did uh, this old uh, uh, contest with, uh, uh, you know, food waste. We got milk, we got salad, we got bread, uh, we got all the ingredients, the four ingredients that you know, we, uh, you waste the most uh, in Australia. And, mm. uh, you know, when, when uh, all these contents, they start thinking about the plate, we will already know where the, you know, the guy who was like eliminate because he's like so easy. And, uh, you know, we were like very spontaneous, play jokes, uh, make them feel comfortable, uh, you know, these kind of things. And uh, I think is a, a great quality that they can put you in trouble most of the time. Because you, you always, I have, a, but Pat, I have a very, uh, I'm living a very a beautiful life. And I arrive at one point in my life that I can say whatever I want and I feel without any filter. And that's a, a super privilege in life. That's a, that's a beautiful freedom. Where uh, Instagram is about to cut us off, Massimo. So I, yeah. I'm, I can talk to you all night, but I'm going to have to wind it up there. That was so wonderful. Do you have any shout outs? I have, a, I have a couple of quick shout outs that I'd like to make. Massimo Batura is brought to you by Gucci. Pat Nurse is brought to you by his principal partner at the Food and Wine Festival, the Bank of Melbourne, and the destination partner, Visit Victoria. Victoria, come and visit us soon. It's a great place to be. Massimo, it's been a tremendous pleasure. We, we no. started this evening talking about lasagna. We talked about a whole lot of stuff. We had futurists. We had poetry. We went back in time, forwards in time. We talked quite a lot more about the Beatles than I thought I would tonight. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure. Um, Thank you for joining us here at the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival online. Bad, so tutti. I love you know I love Australia. One of the you know is one of the things that I miss the most is traveling. You know that. You know from travel I breathe energy. You know it's like to me it's like whoa. But uh, you know we open a repertory in Mexico even if I couldn't even travel that to to Mexico. We keep going. One thing, in our future, there will be always future. So this is the perfect ending. Done. So. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.